Hey, you guys, thanks for listening in to this episode of Tips with T. On today, I have Mr. David with us. How are you doing today, Mr. David? I am doing fantastic. How are you? I'm doing well. I am doing well. So tell us more about yourself and what you do. Sure. I guess the, you know, the short version, uh, I provide, you know, resume, LinkedIn, career coaching. Uh, that is the short of it. So uh, I do provide some other um, services, but uh, uh, that's, uh, that's most of them. Uh, and uh, really anybody and everybody can find me on LinkedIn where I am on uh, all the time, as my wife says. <laughs> So you say you be you, you basically do resume building on LinkedIn and things of that nature. So how was your journey? How has your journey been for you on LinkedIn? No, sure. So uh, you know, thank you for that question. Uh, you know, I've had an account since 2012, uh, but uh, it was really maybe uh, probably you know, January February of 2019 where I started really getting active on LinkedIn. And uh, the company that I currently, or that I, that I worked for back then, um, boy, we were, we were afraid we were going to franchise, we were going to sell. And I, we just weren't sure, you know, about the future. So got back on LinkedIn, started, you know, really looking for a, you know, a new job, a new career. And uh, so, you know, I did, I contacted recruiters, I messaged people, I put my resume out there. I did all the wrong things <laughs> that anybody can do on LinkedIn to try to, to, try to find a new career. Uh -huh. And, you know, it was with the help of others giving me advice uh, that really, really elevated, uh, you know, my game and attempting to find a job. And by doing that, then I would share that information with others on LinkedIn. Awesome. Um, yes, I am on LinkedIn too, um, trying to um, build my network. So what are some tricks that we can do um, on LinkedIn to properly network so we won't make those bad, I guess, networking <laughs> um, sure. decisions? Sure. Well, you know, the lately I've been seeing an awful lot of people posting you know, um, and, and tagging friends and saying, Hey, you know, uh, connect with me and then connect with everybody else, almost like a chain mail type thing. Uh -huh. And, you know, to be honest, not the best way. I mean, uh, I connect with everybody and anybody, but we at least got to have some type of dialogue in a, you know, a comment or a post or whatever. Um, but you know, I'll share one really, uh, really best practice that I share with my clients when, uh, when I'm talking to them uh, about LinkedIn is say you see a job that you want to apply for. Mm -hmm. uh, best thing to do, do not apply for that job just yet. Do this little tip. Go on LinkedIn. We're just going to make up a position. Say it's a project manager at Amazon. What you're going to do is you go on LinkedIn, you search for people, you search by company, you type in Amazon, and then, uh, and then you go and search for people with the title of project manager. And then you message eight or nine of those people. And then you might ask them something like this. Hey, I see, you know, I see you work at Amazon. I was hoping maybe you could share some best practices, you know, or, you know, some uh, industry, you know, tips uh, about the culture with the company and like maybe some exciting things that you're doing in your role. Mm -hmm. Thank you in advance, right? Mm -hmm. They reply to you. They tell you all those things, all those amazing things. And then you may say something like this. Hey, uh, so I saw a position become available, uh, something similar to what you do as a project manager. Uh, do you think based on my LinkedIn profile, I'd be a good fit and should I apply? That right there is the best way if you're looking for work mm -hmm. uh, to connect with others. Because boy, I mean, if they give out employee bonuses, you know, referral bonuses, maybe they just are very helpful, uh, you're gonna get a lot of uh, insights doing that. Now, if you're just looking to build your network, um, maybe following a few hashtags, following some people that, uh, that, uh, that you like on LinkedIn, and you have to engage, don't just like a post, but put a comment, because that person, you know, when you write a post, 
you want engagement, right? You want to learn from others and share and hopefully uh, provide some, you know, guidance and best practices, but you got to be willing to comment and it always doesn't have to, you don't have to agree with the author of the post. Right. Um, I, I, I'm finding a lot of people that like even come on the show, they use LinkedIn a lot. So I had one guy, um, <laughs> he, um, I have a business LinkedIn page, but I have like everything to where, um, I use uh, platforms to where it puts all my posts, schedule all my posts to my other platforms at one time. And so he he notified me. He was like, you haven't made a post on your personal page in the last, in like a month. I was like, are you serious? He was like, yeah. So I was like, well, thank you for letting me know that. See, because I didn't even know. I thought I was still posting there. Um, but I was trying to figure out yesterday when I went back to my page, like I was trying to look for a post and I couldn't find it, but I could find it on my business page. And he was like, because it's not posting to your personal page as well. I was like, okay, well, thank you. Now I have to go back and fix. So they, people really do look for that so they can engage with you and then you can engage back with them. And I'm like, I'm glad he told me that because now I can start being aware of that. So I can be more engaging too with people that come on the show or just other people that looks for those type of posts and they haven't seen it. He was like, yeah, you haven't posted nothing on your personal page in a month. And I'm like, <laughs> I think I, I think that we sometimes think that, you know, other people really aren't following us, right? Mm -hmm. I just hit uh, 26,000 followers just maybe a week ago. And yes, if there's a couple days where I don't post something, sometimes I get a little comment, I get a little nudge. Hey, Dave, are you okay? Did yeah. you get coronavirus? <laughs> no, I didn't get the coronavirus. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I joke, but that is, very, that is very serious, but we have to make light of you know, yeah. things these days, mm -hmm. but you know, we do, we, we, and, and for those out there that maybe have never posted, have never posted or shared a video, I would say that you're a subject matter expert about something mm -hmm. in your career, whatever it is, share that. If you don't want to do a video, I, I did my first video on my 50th birthday and that was uh, January 24th of the last year. That was my first post ever. I talked about uh, saving for retirement. Uh, not that uh, I'm some financial guru, mm -hmm. but I, I do I do know a, a lot about saving money and I enjoy posting uh, about that. So again, everybody's a subject matter expert about something. Just share, share that. You're an expert, again, you're an expert at something. Just because somebody knows something more than you doesn't still make you an expert. Right. So. Uh, you, you gotta, you gotta just share. And it is an amazing platform. And, and if you don't mind, I'd like to kind of expand on uh, my uh, answer to your first question about, you know, how I got on, you know, how I started uh, kind of evolving. Um, so when I was looking for work about a year ago on the, pro, uh, on the platform and still having a job, I was really, I, I, I had, I've been doing, I've been doing resumes on the side for quite a while. Mm -hmm. And, but I started giving, I think about, it was probably about July of last year. I started giving away resume service, LinkedIn profile advice for free mm -hmm. to anybody and everybody on LinkedIn. I did just for free. Uh, I really wasn't trying to hone my skill. I was just, I just wanted to be helpful until somebody said, I got to pay you. You did such an amazing job. Mm -hmm. And I allowed him to pay me. And then uh, ever since then, that was in uh, August. Um, and then August, September, October, November, I was doing my day job, which, is a, which was about 55 plus hours a week, five and a half days a week, and doing about 20 plus hours a week on the side doing resumes. And finally, my day job got in the way, and I left on December 13th. Uh, to do this full time, and boy, oh boy, it, it, you know, I probably work just as much, mm -hmm. um, but it's on my time. I get to schedule, yeah, uh, and I get to help so many, uh, go get to help so many other people. Yeah, that's awesome. When we can take our actual skill that we are really good at and turn it into a business and turn it into like a string of income for us to help other people. And when we tend to think, oh, it's just something. Um, that I'm good at and then you realize people are really willing to pay you for that service you're like wow wow like I didn't I didn't think that my skill was so much beneficial to someone else 
Yeah. And you know what? And I think uh, I suffered from imposter syndrome for a long time. Mm -hmm. When I say a long time, maybe a month or two, but it felt like a long time. But so many others on LinkedIn reached out to me, had phone calls Mm -hmm. uh, with big time, which I thought were big time influencers on LinkedIn, but willing, they saw something, they saw I was a little struggling, but any time a skill um, is new to you, sometimes you have a hard time saying to yourself that you're really, really good at it. Right. I mean, my previous career, I did for a long time. I knew I was good, right? It's okay to, it's okay to say that. But, you know, this new skill, even though I'd been kind of doing it for a while, kind of came new to me. You know, at least all of a sudden people were, you know, uh, seeking me out to, you know, rewrite their resume or give them LinkedIn advice. And it was new to me. So it was really hard to say that I was really, really good. And then, but once you allow yourself to pat yourself on the back, say, yeah, I'm good. Then you might be able to turn that potentially into a, into a business. Right. So now that, you know, with this virus going on and more people are now working from home, how can they sharpen their skills? If they're looking to sharpen their skills. No, sure. So I, I mean, I talk to a lot of people every day and they say, Dave, you know, either they don't like working from home or they really like it. Uh Um, They're finding that they have maybe a little bit more time, maybe because they can't do a hundred percent of their job uh, because they're working from home or no commute, you know, no uh, water cooler gossip. Right. Uh So they have a little bit more time. You better be taking advantage Uh of this because Looks like it's going to be weeks and weeks and weeks still. You need to take advantage of learning a new skill. Um, edX, EDX, Udemy, LinkedIn Learning, all of those are great platforms to, you know, uh, sharpen the saw as a famous author of, uh, of, uh, of mine that, uh, that I really enjoy reading always says that you got to take time to invest in yourself. Um, that edX platform is really amazing because uh, it has, I think, about 1,400 universities uh-huh. that have coursework, and you can take real courses. They're really college courses. And sometimes they might be a year old, and uh, a lot of them are free. But I tell you, they're not easy. Uh, you could get a certificate, I think, for $49 uh, or whatever. But you, you need to sharpen. You need to sharpen your skills because, let's face it, you know. <laughs> your job may change because of this. Yes. So um, it's learning, you know, can you, uh, you got to learn to Zoom, you got to learn to Skype, you got to learn all those things, maybe some remote tools, maybe a diff, maybe you've always been a manager that had an opportunity to see their team in person and you got to work through this, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. So the best thing to do, I mean, go on LinkedIn, find others that have maybe been doing this for a while, ask questions. Right. Um, but yeah, the, the makeup of um, what we do for a living is going to change. Uh, maybe a company isn't going to allow people to work remotely more. Maybe they're going to find that they can allow, uh, you know, their employees to work from home a little bit more. So mm-hmm. use this time because I know you have a little bit of downtime, uh, people. So use this time to invest in yourself. Yeah, I'm glad you said the edX um, app because someone right before we started the interview, they was like, you need to check this app out. Um, oh. <laughs> so um, I'm going to download it and check it out some because it was like it can teach you like how to market your business and stuff like that. It has multiple courses up there that can help you grow your business as well, not just with the certifications because he was like, he's doing some of the courses. So I was just like, okay, so I'm going to download it today and check it out and then refer my other clients or anybody that I know to as well um, that use it or that wants to use it so they can have access to it Um, because I'm always telling people that they need to um, you know always try to find ways to rebrand your business rebrand yourself um, find new skills Um, like during this time I've been telling my customers or like clients that have our business owners well how can you move to virtual assistance can you use zoom to do conference calls um does you know do you use freeconferencecall.com um because like even with me I was doing seminars so now I'm doing webinars strictly online because we can't meet no more so find other ways to still give that service or 
to still do what you need to do, but find other ways to do it so that way you won't miss out of money or leave money on the table by not trying to be flexible <laughs> or trying to evolve with everyone else. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely going to tell people to check that out. I know the busier that I get, um, uh, February was a very busy month for me. Uh, you know, this month, not so much. And it, that's understandable. Um, but virtual assistant is something that I am going to have to, um, have to do because, you know, there's only so much time in a day uh -huh. and, uh, those virtual assistants, you know, can relieve maybe some tasks of yours that free up, uh, that valuable time that we all need. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, it's a really good help. I have, I actually had to look into one for myself because I'm like, yeah, I can't do all this by myself. <laughs> sometimes in order for you to be successful, sometimes you're going to have to learn how to delegate because you can't do it all. So yeah, a virtual assistant, you know, is very, very good. And even if people like us and I tell people that I'm like, even if you feel find yourself being an assistant or you're doing some type of assistant role, maybe you want to offer that service to someone else too as well. Um, so you brought up a really good point about, you know, um, sometimes we got to ask for help. LinkedIn is a great platform to do just that. Mm -hmm. If you have a question about anything, right? Mm -hmm. In fact, I plan on next week uh, posting a question. Hey, I might be interested in a virtual assistant. Can anybody help? Well, the last time I did a post similar to that, but offering a different service, asking right. for a different service, Right. Uh, that post blew up. I mean, and I got so many offers. It was too many. It right. wasn't about virtual <laughs> assistance, but it was about something else. But, uh, you know, again, best, best way, go on LinkedIn, ask a bunch of questions, connect with others, and uh, you're going to build some relationships along the way, too. I have met in person a lot of the people that I've uh, uh, connected with. Maybe not always, um, maybe through Zoom if they live too far, but you know, I was at a meeting and uh, in, uh, I live in Washington State, I was at a meeting in Texas, uh, and uh, before I left my corporate job and I met two of the individuals that I really love to engage with mm -hmm. on LinkedIn, got to meet them in person, uh, had breakfast with one, lunch with the other, and uh, boy, you know, we might not meet in person again, but we'll remember that uh, that moment. So, and, and with Zoom, why can't you, you know, get on the get on the phone and talk with somebody, you know, in Europe or Australia or wherever? So, right. Well, thank you, Mr. Davis, so much for coming on the show and sharing your helpful tips about LinkedIn. I'm definitely going to be doing some more work on my LinkedIn because I'm trying to grow my followers and um, connect with different people. Um, but tell our listeners how they can get in contact with you so they can render your services, and I will share the screen. Can you get your social handles on it? Sure. I think the, the best the best way is to um, visit me on LinkedIn. That is the best <laughs> place. I'm on Facebook, but this much, I just don't have the time. I have time for LinkedIn. I have it anyway. Uh, or check out my website. My website uh, has all my services on there. I actually devoted a page also to anything and everything coronavirus, how to get unemployment, some best practices about uh, the uh, mortgage forbearance uh, uh, plan out there. So again, just some free little tips and tricks uh, regarding anything corona for small businesses and uh, individuals as well. That's awesome. And you guys, if you want to get in contact with me, um, my number is 910-317-0396. You can email me at contact at MJ financial.biz you can schedule a consultation on my website um mjfinancial.biz and you can also find this episode you guys on anchor and this video will also be uploaded to youtube for those who wants to go back and rewatch the replay mm -hmm. so thank you so much mr david again for being on the show i very appreciate you and your tips oh thank you very much and uh i might i might i might share this with uh, some other folks on linkedin as well so well that would be awesome and i appreciate it <laughs> all right you guys see you on the next episode